Hello everyone, it's Gerald Major here, the Canadian Spondylitis Association, reporting from the Arthritis Broadcast Network, um, hashtag C-Arthritis. Um, I couldn't be happier to be joined here with Dr. Vinu Chandran um, to discuss a little bit about uh, spondyloarthritis and specific, specifically psoriatic disease. Um, so Vinu, welcome, and can you just tell us a little bit about yourself and how you fit into rheumatology? Thanks, Gerald. It's once again happy to be here. I was here last year and it was a great event. Uh, I am a rheumatologist and I do research on spondyloarthritis, specifically psoriatic arthritis. And uh, we are here today at the uh, uh, Park Vancouver uh, for the annual CRA meeting where we're going to discuss all research uh, and education that happens uh, within Canada. Uh, and so I'm here representing my university as well as uh, uh, part of the management of the CRA program and uh, looking forward to what's happening in the academic sessions, uh, specifically with regard to spondyloarthritis. So what, what is it particularly about this year's um, um, CRA conference that you're most excited about outside of hosting the Jeopardy? <laughs> yes, the Jeopardy is going to be fun, but the, the, uh, it's... The theme is personalized medicine, and that's where uh, the world is going to, and I'm particularly interested in, 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 a, in a heterogeneous disease like uh, inflammatory arthritis and autoimmune disease. Uh, I think we need to um, personalize therapy so that the right treatment is given to the right person to prevent uh, uh, damage and disability, and so that's the theme, and we look forward to the uh, presentations that are going to be here. Excellent. Um, so with respect to your clinic, um, and to other patients out there living with psoriatic disease. Um, I mean, what are you seeing? What's new uh, since last year? What have you been up to um, and, and what's coming? Right, and so uh, we, we are chatting briefly uh, outside about psoriatic disease and psoriatic arthritis. I think the, uh, there is increasing recognition that it, uh, it, it is the people with psoriasis have multiple other conditions, not just the skin. and including arthritis, depression, cardiovascular disease. And so it's important not to just focus on the skin or the joint, but to look at the patient as a whole. And so that's what um, uh, we are all interested in now and uh, looking at psoriatic disease and reducing it, its impact. Um, Canada, there are about 3% of the population have psoriasis and its comorbidities, and so that's a huge number. Um, and as the years go by, comorbidities uh, uh, add on and cause uh, higher mortality, uh, morbidity, uh, and disability. And so what we're trying to do is to predict these um, uh, comorbidities. So who are those patients with psoriasis who are going to develop the arthritis and also cardiovascular disease? What can you do to prevent that from happening rather than treating it once that has happened? Because the, you know, the best treatment, of course, is trying to prevent something ad adverse uh, from happening. So as soon as patients have psoriasis, we, we, we sh want to look at that as a high-risk group for other things going on. The skin could get even uh, terribly worse, or the arthritis could happen, or cardiovascular disease risk factors need to be uh, uh, tackled so that a bad outcomes don't happen. And so that's the focus that's been we at our team in Toronto have been working on for the last uh, year or so. I appreciate the talk about uh, comorbidities as a patient that lives with ankylosing spondylitis, psoriatic arthritis, and a, and a slew of comorbidities. Um, I often find conversations with others living with spondyloarthritis. Uh, it doesn't take very long until we're talking about comorbidities. What is it about spondyloarthritis that, uh, that, that we seem to be at risk for more? So the um, comorbidities in general in patients with spondyloarthritis, you know, are the diseases that go along with, with the condition. So there are some conditions like uveitis and inflammatory bowel disease that are inherent to the disease. So um, th these are inflammatory conditions that tend to happen more often in patients with ankylosing spondylitis or psoriatic arthritis. And, uh, and if you carefully look at the bowel of patients with uh, ankylosing spondylitis, you'll see uh, subclinical disease, meaning that the disease is there, but it's quiescent. And some people have, uh, you know, excess cell patients. Um, so th that's that's a sort of comorbidity. That is a comorbidity that happens, which is a, which in many ways is a manifestation of the disease per se. 
The other comorbidities are that uh, are, uh, uh, are diseases that are more common in patients with spondyloarthritis, which in, and that could include um, uh, chronic pain and depression, and more importantly, uh, and I, I won't say more importantly, but importantly, cardiovascular disease. So uh, uh, in, uh, persistent inflammation, be it in your joints or your skin or other areas, leads to what we call ather accelerated atherosclerosis. And so the plaque buildup in the vessels in your heart is more than similar uh, people in the general population. And so the heart attacks and strokes are higher. And so treating inflammation, in addition to the other factors like diabetes, and smoking, and uh, the uh, cholesterol is important to prevent those complications. And so that's a big focus now because ultimately that's one that's what causes a lot of mortality in patients with spondyloarthritis. Um, and then one more question for me, and we'll reach out to those if you're online. Uh, please send your questions in. But um, I guess the, uh, the last thing from my perspective would be um, are, are we getting better? Are we, are we getting better times to diagnosis? Are we getting better treatments? Or are, we, are, we, are we getting better? So diagnosis, I don't know. I think we are getting better. Uh, there is a big awareness in primary care and, uh, and as well as in dermatology and, and gastroenterology where uh, patients with, say, uveitis, uh, ophthalmology, gastroenterology, and uh, dermatology, the physicians look for arthritis. They ask those questions and refer to rheumatologists for a formal diagnosis. In primary care, also there is more awareness, and we hope that will lead to uh, early diagnosis. We have come out with uh, screening questionnaires, uh, for people with back pain, for people with uh, inflammatory bowel disease, and people with psoriasis, and that is uh, meant to facilitate that diagnosis. Uh, biomarker research, genomic research, identifying genes that predispose to arthritis are all huge research areas. And so that's going to happen, I think. But the biggest um, uh, advance has been in therapy. Ten years ago, for ankylosing spondylitis, it was just anti-inflammatories, 10, 15 years ago. Now, then came the anti-TNF agents, but only that was available. And once you failed that or you couldn't take it for uh, some other reason, then uh, there was no other treatment options available. But now with uh, anti-IL-17 blockade, there's another treatment option that has come up. Uh, and research is ongoing for many other new molecules. And so uh, uh, for ankylosing spondylitis and more so for psoriatic arthritis, there's more treatments now available. For psoriasis, it's been amazing. You know, some of the newer therapies completely clear your skin and keep it that way for a long time. Uh, and so I think um, there's a lot of progress in therapy. There is some progress in early diagnosis, and uh, and the hope is that we can get um, a personalized therapy by figuring out which is the best treatment for the right person to prevent the comorbidities and other adverse events. Do we have questions? I would say it's still early days yet, um, and um, but the pace of research is accelerating. It's very hard to put a timeline to that, but there is increasing recognition that uh, uh, just you know trial and error is no longer the uh, right way to go forward. But there needs to be more investment in looking at personalized therapy in arthritis. There is a lot of investment in cancer because that's a big deal. Uh, but uh, what we say is arthritis is also overall has a maybe a bigger impact than cancer. And so that's uh, what we all need to work towards. And hopefully it's going to happen. Uh, but I'm hard, you know, it's hard to give a, a timeline to that, maybe 10 years. Things are changing so rapidly uh, in, with technology. I think this is possible. But in healthcare, there's always uh, a, a, a latency. Um, it takes time for change to happen. Uh, and so it won't be as fast as it's happened in, say, communication technology, but in health technology, hopefully it's going to be sooner than later. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you. And we have one question from Facebook. This person emailed us her question before, and she is asking what is the medication of choice for those living with psoriatic arthritis and osteoarthritis around age 70 who are unable to take anti-inflammatory medication? 
So for psoriatic arthritis, it's an inflammatory arthritis, and so um, anti-inflammatories are a problem because of the age. We like to avoid uh, anti-inflammatories um, due to the risk of cardiovascular disease as well as renal problems. And so it depends on the degree of inflammation in this, uh, the joint. So if um, the psoriatic arthritis is active, uh, then uh, disease-modifying drugs, um, methotrexate, sulfasalazine, lefinomide are all treatment options. And uh, the family, the, the rheumatologist, the treating rheumatologist would judge the risks and benefits of all these drugs and um, treat you appropriately. Uh, there, it, it's hard to give you know a blanket statement on which drug is the best drug, but uh, it depends on the other comorbidities, uh, how robust you are, what your numbers are uh, on your blood work, etc. And so, um, I would say avoiding NSAIDs is a good idea. Uh, but and de depending on the degree of inflammation, treating you with a uh, disease-modifying agent or even a biologic agent uh, would not be a contraindication, just for because of your age. Thank you. I'm sure that would help the person who wrote the question. Um, another one we have from Facebook is, what are the differences between RA, AS, and PSA? Right. So that's a uh, <laughs> can take speak two hours on that, but yes, RA is uh, a very different disease um, compared to say psoriatic arthritis and ankylosing spondylitis. So RA uh, genetically is very distinct. Uh, the uh, gene associations are in the HLA class two region, whereas ankylosing spondylitis and psoriatic arthritis are uh, associated with a different set of genes, also in the MHC region, but in the class one region. So the uh, um, I would say RA is more autoimmune and related to diseases like uh, uh, type 1 diabetes and lupus, whereas um, um, so spondyloarthritis and psoriatic arthritis are more, uh, we call it a mixed uh, autoimmune, autoinflammatory disease, where uh, uveitis and Crohn's disease are more closely related to it. Um, so RA causes uh, inflammation in the synovial joints, so in your hands and feet uh, mainly, whereas um, ankylosing spondylitis affects the spine, so sacroiliac joints, uh, the lumbar spine, and cervical spine. Uh, psoriatic arthritis uh, pr presents, um, uh, it's uh, in many ways similar to RA, but it's, uh, when you look at the uh, pathology, it's more similar to the ankylosing spondylitis, so we call both ankylosing spondylitis and psoriatic arthritis as spondyloarthritis, and it can affect the spine, the peripheral joints, and particularly the enthesis where the tendons and ligaments attach to bone. So they're very distinct diseases. Uh, some of the treatments are similar, I agree, but uh, uh, the underlying pathophysiology uh, is more similar between psoriatic arthritis and ankylosing spondylitis, but very distinct in RA. I hope I answered the question. I want to thank you very much. Hold on, sorry. One more question. <laughs> One more. One more. Great. Let's we'll hang more questions. Great. Okay. How old are people when they get ankylosing spondylitis? So, uh, I was 14. Yeah. So <laughs> late, I know, mid and late teens are the is the time when uh, many kids get it, and so uh, it can happen in childhood. It can happen yeah, as you get older. Uh, typically, you know, less than age 40 or 45. Beyond 45, it is less likely to get ankylosing spondylitis. You could get other spondyloarthritis, but um, and uh, many of the times it's uh, it's in the late teens when kids come with back pain and it's not diagnosed until it becomes, you know, some um, some other joint gets affected. Just with back pain, it becomes a little hard to diagnose, and that's the big challenge that we have: the seven years in delay in diagnosis, and so. Kids get it when they're 14 or 15. By the time it's diagnosed, they're 22, 23, and it's affected their uh, schooling and uh, work, etc. So it's uh, it's a big problem. And one last question: Is there a genetic disposition? Yes. So uh, all diseases, except for I guess road traffic accidents, have a genetic predisposition, 
Uh, but uh, this is particularly so for spondyloarthritis, uh, especially the spectrum of disease. So, for example, in a family, uh, somebody has psoriatic arthritis, but somebody else has psoriasis, somebody else has Crohn's disease uh, within the immediate family. And so all these diseases go together compared to, say, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, ankylosing spondylitis, and psoriatic arthritis have a much higher genetic predisposition, many more first and second degree relatives are affected by similar conditions, uh, and that's how we uh, gauge the, um, the genetic risk. Uh, if you have a twin brother, or an identical twin, there's a much higher risk of getting the same disease in the twin, and so the uh, genetic contribution to these diseases are huge, and that's what we invest are investigating to figure out what the genes are and how we can uh, treat the disease by knowing the genetic risk. So I just want to thank you again one more time um, for being Thanks, here, sir. for doing what you do for our community and uh, people living with arthritis. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. And we have 4.30. I think we have someone here from Health Canada. So stay tuned.